Honorable members, I welcome you all to this morning's sitting. On Friday, 15th March 2024, the House approved movement of funds worth 23 billion shillings appropriated under the Supplementary Schedule 1 for the financial year 2023-2024. During the appropriation process, a total of Uganda shillings 84 billion, 920 million, 466,785 was appropriated to vote, one th vote 13, Ministry of Education and its posts. A total of 23 billion Uganda shillings was meant for vote 166 National Council for Sports. And realizing that there is urgent need to correct the anomaly in paragraph 2 above, I now therefore beg to move that this House resolves itself into a committee of supply to amend its, resolu its resolution dated the 12th December 2023 in respect of votes 166 and vote 013. Honorable members, I want to remind you that we passed a, a sports act here. And when we passed a sports act, there was money under the supplemental budget that was provided for in that budget for infrastructure in Kampala. Remember, we are going to host Chan in Kampala here and AFCON. For us to be able to host, to be granted the rights to host the Africa Cup of Nations in 2027, the regulations of CAF require that you should have hosted another competition before. And for us to be able to be granted, we also accepted to host Chan. Chan is a different competition, and that is coming in 2024, in September. So for us to be able to host that competition, again, the three countries, we needed resources to prepare the hosting. And Chan, our plan is to host it in only one stadium, and that is Mandela National Stadium. And that's what these resources are meant to do, prepare for Chan. And then the Afghan costs that have been included in this is simply preparation. Just this weekend, we received the inspection team, and these expenses are already going on. That actually, we expected to receive the resources in about December. But up to today, expenses are going on. Inspection teams are flying in and out in preparation of the main team that is going to come and sign a contract with us to host AFCON 2027. So we are already running late, but these are not the resources to construct the stadiums. These are resources to prepare and if we don't do it now, we run a danger of losing the rights to host the Africa Cup of Nations. Honorable members, I put a question that a sum of Uganda shillings, 23 billion, be moved from vote 0013, Minister of Education and Sports, to vote 166, National Council of Sports. Those in favor say on the contrary, nay. The eyes have it. During the sitting, the House also received ministerial policy statements and budget estimates for the financial year 2024-2025. I beg to lay on table the ministerial policy statement, financial 2024-2025, vote 003, Office of the Prime Minister. I beg to lay. Right Honorable Speaker, I hereby present to you the ministerial policy statement and expenditure proposals for the Ministry of East African Community Affairs, vote 021 for financial year 2024, that is stroke 25, for, cons for consideration and approval. Right Honorable Speaker, in accordance with Section 13 of the Public Finance Management Act 2015 and Rule 146 of the Rules of Procedure of Parliament of Uganda, I beg to lay the ministerial policy statement for financial year 24-25 for votes 1, 
011 Ministry of Local Government, Vote 146 of Local Government Finance Commission, and Vote 601 to 935 <coughs> of all local governments in Uganda. Right Honorable Speaker, I beg to lay the Ministerial Policy Statement of the Health Sub Program for the financial year 2024 2025 for consideration and approval in accordance with section 13 subsection 13 of the public finance and management act 2015 as amended i beg to lay in the sitting the state minister for higher education honorable john chrysostom muingo said the team will look into the matter of primary school teachers in nakaseke district who are made to sit for exams is it under is it a policy is it under regulations for the Ministry of Education. The reason why I'm raising this it is because um, uh, Wednesday of this week in Akaske District, LOC 5 chairperson Minister Komu subjected Piero E. Mock exams to primary teachers in Akaseke. I think they were who do winked and they sat exams as in for those schools which performed badly of students who failed in exams of PLOE. So the Minister of Education should uh, come and explain how is it implemented. Government, we need uh, an explanation uh, to that effect. Uh, this is going to be promoted. Is that the best way to to, to, to uh, improve on performance? I know that under decentralization, sometimes at that level, when there is poor performance in academics, districts usually devise measures of addressing the poor performance. I know that it happens under decentralization. So I wanted to find out um, the clarification. Maybe has the district come up with a policy in that line or there is nothing and, uh, and uh, somebody just took it upon themselves to begin conducting exams. And most of these teachers are not examiners. And that partly explains why most of those schools are not doing well, especially the upcountry schools. And I think whenever they smoke, they must be fired. In the wisdom of this LC5, for him to move and say, I want to subject the teachers to the examination, I think he wanted to prove and assess and see really if that par with what you enable requires. But that means the burden goes back to the Minister of Education. Minister of Education must have retwing programs through the CCT centers. Rather than being uh, condemning or us condemning the actions of the LOC5, we need actually to engage him and engage the districts to understand the deep causes of poor performance by these children. Parents world over in this country are sacrificing to take their children to school. Yes, there might be other factors, but our education system particularly because of the way decentralization has been. The umbrical code between the center and the local government has been cut off. If you have inspectors going into schools, checking uh, attendance, these days we have a lot of absenteeism. About what is happening in Nakaseke, we as a ministry we are shocked to learn about this from, from the media. And, and because we know that... Uh, Nakaseke local government is not an, an official. We have sent our team on the ground to find out exactly what is happening. Would this be true? And right on the speaker, I want to assure this house that after we've done the study, because we'll come back and report to you. I submit your right on the speaker. The speaker, Anita Mong, offered Ramadan wishes to the Muslim community during the month of fasting. Our brothers and sisters from the Muslim faith started the month of Ramadan on 10th 
March 2024. This marks a period of religious reflection, unity and sharing across the Muslim fraternity. Aware of the importance of faith as a cornerstone of human existence, I take the opportunity to wish all the Muslims a happy and fulfilling Ramadan. I want to urge you to use this period to strengthen your faith. Pray for us, the representatives of the people of this country, and to uphold the traditions, the values, and the cultures so that we have a credible society. I now adjourn the house to 28th.